Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we were able to find the inverse matrix of A. Remember that the matrix of A was simply the coefficients of the x, y, and z variables in our three equations of our linear system. And so by manipulating using the, the what we call the reduced row echelon form of the matrix, we turned the A matrix into the identity matrix causing the part on the right that started as the identity matrix into the inverse matrix of A. And then we realized that the XYZ matrix is equal to the product of the inverse matrix of A times the B matrix. So now let's go ahead and do that multiplication. So I just simply replaced the inverse of A by what the inverse of A was equal to, which we obtained in the previous video. So how do you multiply these two matrices? Well, it turns out that X, Y, and Z, these are the three elements of our variable matrix is equal to, and what we end up with is a matrix that has one column with just three elements in the vertical direction. The first element is going to be the product of these two plus the product of those two plus the product of those two. So you go from left to right and top to bottom. So here, maybe I should make this a little bit wider to give me some more room. And so my first element, which is equal to x, is going to be 1 times 5 plus negative 1 times 4 plus 0 times negative 8. And yes, I might as well just put parentheses around it like that so I stay consistent. So again, it's 1 times 5 plus a negative 1 times 4 plus a 0 times negative 8. For the second element, which is equal to y, I take the second row, multiply times this column, so it's negative 2 times 5 plus 5 times 4 plus 1 times negative 8. So I go across this way, I go down this way, so negative 2 times 5, 5 times 4, 1 times negative 8. And finally, to get the z value, I do this row, multiply this row times this column, so negative 1 times 5 plus 3 times 4, plus 1 times negative 8. And now all I have to do is simplify this into a single set of three numbers. So here I get 5 minus 4, which is 1, plus 0, that gives me 1. Negative 10 plus 20, so negative 10 plus 20, that's plus 10, minus 8, that's equal to 2, and minus 5, plus 12, that gives me a plus 7, minus 8 gives me a negative 1. In other words, based upon this, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to negative 1. So you could see the same thing over here, or you could simply write it out like this as a solution. Now just to make sure that we did this correctly, let's plug it into one of our equations to make sure these are the correct answers. So we're going to do a check, and let's take the middle equation, we have x plus y minus z equals 4. And so when we plug these values in for x, y, and z, so the question is, is 1 plus 2 minus a minus 1 equal to 4, question mark? Well, we have 1 plus 2 minus times minus is plus 1 equals 4. 4 equals 4. That checks. So it looks like we probably did things correctly, and that's the end result. So remember, it took two videos. The previous video where we showed you how to find the inverse matrix and then this video where we showed how to multiply the inverse matrix times the B matrix. The B matrix is simply the constants on the right side, the equal sign in each of the three equations. You multiply it together just like that and you get the values for X, Y, and Z. And that is how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Doesn't it work beautifully? You don't like the method at all? Because I make mistakes. It's just a mistake trap for me. Yeah. My yeah. brain gets tangled up. Yes, it's uh, not a surprise. Not a lot of people like this. But you know, if your teacher wants you to know this and it's on the test. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It will let you know it and I grind it out and Carl cost me many points. <laughs>